Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. When I made a video a couple of weeks ago making small collage papers, quite a number of you said that you would like to see how I go on to use these. Now, I did incorporate some of them into a journal page last week, a mixed media face journal page, and I'll leave links to both the collage making video and the journal page in the links above and indeed below. But I thought I would go on and do another project with these today. So I'm just looking through various papers, some pieces of old drop sheets, there was some gel plate printed pages as well, but I don't actually use them today. This is just some packaging paper, it's pre-perforated and I've just taken a piece of that off. It's a slightly unusual shape, but I thought, hmm, I've got an idea for this. I'm going to use some gel matte medium as my glue for this today and just some basic tools. Now, I was going to do two or three of these. I go on to make almost what could be a mini master board, but I take it right the way through to complete the project for today. So this is a very, very easy project to do. And I know before when I've said that things are quite easy, some of you have said, well, you didn't think they were perhaps easy for you, but I think this is something that virtually anyone could do. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my collage pieces and some of the little bits I'm tearing off from drop sheets and I am just going to glue them down and onto this piece of paper. So I am going to speed it up here because there's really not a lot to say about it. What I will say though is that again this is one of these what I might call a rainy day project you know where I want to create something or maybe I want it to be outside but the weather's not good and I don't want to get into a great big project and spend a lot of time on it. So this is something I could do and just take a few minutes to do. I could take half an hour to do. I think the entire project to take it through to completion was about an hour and 15 minutes but that included a bit of drying time. So it's one of these things, don't need to give an awful lot of thought to, but can make something nice from it. Now, I am gluing these down quite randomly, but from time to time I do kind of stop and think about, well, will this look better here or there? You'll see that the collage papers that I made, I'm actually tearing them down even further, so I'm not using them in their entirety. I'm taking little pieces from it and just now collaging them down and into place. So where I've got maybe two pieces from one of the small collage papers, I won't necessarily put them side by side. I will put them onto different areas of the paper so that there's not too big a block of one paper. Now this could be done differently. I could have taken each paper in its entirety and glued the whole thing down. I'm just quite keen to see how this ends up uh, at the end of the day. So I will jump forward from time to time because this is literally all I'm doing. I'm drinking my coffee at the same time. It's that sort of project where you can stop and do that, but just literally tearing pieces and gluing them down. Now, as I think I've said before with a number of projects, you could simply use a glue stick for this. I will at some point in the future be using more media on top of this, so I want to use something that I know will actually stick. So I'm going to leave you for just a couple of minutes while I glue this and then I'll be back.
You'll see that I've not included a lot of colour in this, there's just some little bits here and there, but mainly I've gone for something that's quite muted or just has the black on the collage papers. Once I've got this side done, I then just turn it over and do the next side. I think I gave it a very quick dry, perhaps not, but uh, yeah, just wanted to get on and do the next side. Originally I was going to leave the first, leave the other side blank, but then I decided I would move on. Now you see there that I'm kind of starting to fold it and play about with it because I guess when I started this I was maybe thinking of doing one thing, but then I kind of changed my mind. Probably at that point that's when I decided what I was going to do. So all I'm going to do now is to get this side done completely. Just showing there that some of the tissue paper that I've used, you can then see the original pattern still coming through the tissue paper. Now in the video that I did uh, just a few days ago when I was using my gel plate with some stencils, I mentioned that I use Carnival tissue paper. It's a wet strength tissue paper. I did say that I would leave the link in the description box. I forgot to do that. It is there now. But just for anyone who has, you know, who was looking for that and uh, didn't see that I've since updated it, that link is there now. It's not a sponsored link or anything like that. It's just to let you know that that's my favourite tissue paper to use in projects. Okay, so again, I'm just going to leave you for a minute and then I'll be back. Now that both sides are done, I am going to add some ink, just to add a little bit of colour. So I'm going to use this Red Earth by De La Rowney FW, and also this Raw Sienna by De La Rowney FW. And I'm just going to drop these onto the page, just randomly, and all I'm going to do then is to take my bottle of water and just spray some water on it and just let the ink kind of play on the page. You'll see that I move it back and forward a bit. I lift the page both ways just to let the ink run over it. So this will give me a bit of colour and will help kind of bring all those individual pieces together. You'll see some of the papers darken with the water because of course they're not good quality papers. Many of these are just a, a type of waste paper. I simply flipped it over there and I'm getting the ink on the other side as well. You see I do that now. I just turned that over just to kind of mush it in a bit and now just dabbing it with a piece of paper towel which just helps to dry it a little bit. It's gone onto that drop sheet that of course will be used as further collage in future as well or for backgrounds in, in journal pages. So just doing the exact same on this side now, just very randomly. And as I say, all this does is to help make the page just a little bit more cohesive. You will see that I have not trimmed the edges of the page, so where there was a bit of overhang, I've deliberately left that. So I then dry it and you'll see that the ink has really gone well into the paper, you know, partly because I, I was lifting some of it off and others have, bits of it have just absorbed into it. When I was going through my scraps I also came across these little bits of fabric and I've decided that I'm just going to glue them down. So I just tore them down into smaller pieces still, just in line with what I'm doing on here anyway. And I'm just using this, using this three in one glue just to randomly put these on. I don't know, maybe only half a dozen pieces or something like that, maybe less on each side.
this point I made sure that everything was really dry because I then took out my sewing machine and I just decided I would do just a little bit of stitching on this just to add a bit more interest and a bit more texture. I had hoped that it would have had black thread in it, it didn't, it had that multicolour and to be honest I just thought well I'm just going to leave it, it would take me too long to change it. I am not an expert on the sewing machine by any means and I only ever use it when I'm doing art things like this, making books, that kind of thing. So in fact I think even when I was doing this, those of you that know about machines, when the way the top thread attaches to the bottom thread, I think something went wrong so the, the stitching ended up looking a bit strange. But you know what, I decided just to leave it. I actually quite liked the way that it looked. So I'm mainly just running through those little bits of fabric that I put on just to hold them in place a little bit more. I did make certain that the glue was fully dry because obviously I don't want a needle to go through wet glue and then to take it down and into the machine. So you know this isn't something that was essential. I could have taken a pen and added four stitches. It was just what kind of called me to do on that day. So I didn't do very much and there you see it and all I've done is to leave all the loose threads, both the kind of loose bits of thread from the original fabric and then the threads uh, hanging from using the sewing machine. Now all I'm doing is taking some titanium white paint Obviously too much came out and here I'm just using my brayer to roll it out a bit. Now one of the things here about having left the threads long was that they then started to catch in the brayer. So that was okay, you know, I managed to uh, break them off so it wasn't a big issue. So again, this particular bit of the process is really just about helping to unify the background. I go over the fabric, I go over the threads, obviously the collage, and it just helps meld it all into one piece. Now, I am going to make some more of these. I thought I would get some more made that particular day. It probably took me just a little bit longer than I intended and I was going to have a few done and maybe do a couple of projects but you know I don't like these videos to be too long. So I've got that on and now I give it a really good dry again. So I'm just taking out this drop sheet and I'll put the paper on top of that just so you can see it a bit better because it was starting to blend in with my background. And now what I'm looking at is how I might make this into a small journal. And I'm just really looking at possible different sizes for it and I decide just to do what's easiest. I fold that in half. And all I'm going to do is to take that palette knife, that metal palette knife that's at the side if I need to cut through any of the threads. But basically this pulled away quite easily. So I've then got two kind of squares. So I'm going to half each of these again. And again, very rough. I want the edges to be very rough on this. I'm not looking for this to be neat and pristine. Had any of the fabric been going right across, I would have just taken a pair of scissors to it. And you can see that it tears fairly straight, but there are rough edges on it. And that's what I wanted because obviously I had the rough edges where I had the overhang of paper from gluing it down. And, you know, for me, the interesting thing about this project is I've made all those little papers I've torn them up further, I've put them all down and it's interesting to see the way that they now just sit together in this one little journal. So I'm now looking at just folding these in half because I will make really just this one signature journal and one of these pages will be the outside page. So all I'm doing now is folding them all into half. I'll then just sit them inside each other and just see how they look. 
I swapped them about a bit just to, you know, I decide which one I kind of want is the front page and the back page. It really wouldn't have mattered which one I used, but it's just, I don't know, it's a bit of fun just sitting, doing that, swapping them around and then deciding which one to have as a front cover. Now that I've got that, I wanted to use a piece of garden twine for the closure, but I couldn't actually find my garden twine. So I had just used that, looked out that other piece out the scrap box. Now all I'm going to do here is to use an awl. You could use anything sharp and I'm just going to really make two holes because this is a no sew journal. Although I did some stitching on it with the sewing machine, this is really a no sew journal. So just going through all the pages, the four pages in one go and I'm just going to basically poke this through. Now it took me uh, a little bit of effort once the end kind of opened up a little bit and I couldn't get all four, I couldn't get through all four at once so I'm just threading them through one at a time. But this will end up being a nice secure way to hold the pages in place and no sewing involved. I know a lot of you don't like to sew journals so this really is an easy way and I just thought this piece of, I think it's almost a piece of raffia, I just thought this went so well with the kind of natural colours of the journal. So just feeding it through again one by one it doesn't look there like I'm having too much difficulty but that's just because I've got it on double speed that last one was a bit of a nuisance and I think I had to end up cutting off the end of the, the piece of raffia just to make a kind of cleaner edge on it. It just got kind of dunted a bit and I couldn't get it through. But you know, with these little things you just have to keep persevering. I'm going to get the scissors now. Oh no, not quite. I'm having another go at it. I wasn't giving up at this point, but there we go. There's the scissors and this will go through pretty easily now. Now, of course, I left all those threads long. It was just a look I wanted. Those could have been neatened off. So all I'm doing now is trying to make those two pieces roughly the same size making sure that it's nice and tight and all I'm going to do now is a knot on here and this stuff will stay tied together pretty well. So just doing another knot on top of that and there we go. And I can wrap these round and then I'll be able to, to just tie it and if I put more into the book it will then actually be able to expand. So I decided at this point I wanted to do a bit more so I have some fabric scraps here. These actually came from Love Me Blue and I'll put a link to her shop, her website on in the description box below. I would got some recycled sari pieces etc from her. That was another piece that I had a while ago. In fact I used that in my love notes journal that I made and I'll link that above and below. I'm just going to take a stapler now. This just happens to be the Tim Holtz tiny stapler, whatever it's called. They do have very small staples but again I just thought for a bit of added interest, I, I mean I love using staples in journals like this. So I'm just going to staple on these little bits of fabric just in different places. I think one of the staples was bent in there. Just getting that out. So just going to staple these in. Again, I'm doing it quite randomly. I'll turn it over. I'll just dunt those down on the back to make sure there's no sharp edges. I like that little bit. thought it made quite a nice kind of tab. But again, just going to staple it on. Now, 
for me, this little book is fine as is. I would quite happily just put this on the shelf, take it out from time to time, have a little look at it and do nothing more with it. But I might come back and do something. I do, and I've said this before, I do have a kind of tendency to make the books and then that's it, don't do anything with it. But I have a couple of thoughts about what I might do with this. So just putting on different sizes of scraps. Not worried that they've got frayed edges or anything of that sort. And of course I do like the way that this has a kind of grungy look to it. And I love the way that the papers have all kind of come together with all those different marks on them. You know, this is not something I could have planned, the final look of it. There's just no way of knowing how they would look. That page looks a little bit more distressed with the white paint than some of the others and that's just the randomness of the approach. So I just do that a little bit more and then I'll just give you a very quick flip through of it. Just before I do the quick flip through just a reminder that, of course, Nina will have a video. And I don't think I said, actually, at the beginning. I'll leave Nina's video link below. I don't think I said. The Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group prompt for this week is Let's Journal. And that's why I made a journal. Because it's week four of the month, so the prompt is Let's Journal. Gosh, I usually would say that right up front and I just realised I didn't say it. So, there we go. It's Let's Journal. I love that little pop of red that's just going to show through here and there. And of course, all of this was just using little scraps. A lot of recycled papers were used and lots of little scraps of fabric. I'm just putting a little... Uh, what, what do you call that? Sort of ruche, is it? A ruche? Just folding it up ruffle, just to make it a little bit different. Just looking at adding this bit onto the back. And of course the other link that I'll leave below is a link to the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, so that if you want to be a part of a group and show us what you create uh, to these prompts then you know we'd, we'd love to have you there. There are some questions you have to answer to join the group, nothing difficult though. So you know do follow the link if you'd like to come and join us in the group, it's a very supportive group. Right just about there and I'm just going to do a very quick flip through. Now of course I've tied it I'm just going to open it again. So there we go. So a variety of collaged pages with just some inks, white paint and then some little fabric scraps added. So I do hope you've enjoyed this project. I hope that it's something that you would like to try at some point. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some point in the future. So if you've made it this far, thank you ever so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. So take care, everybody. Bye for now.